Well, the Spectre Pipeline, um, you know, is the direct offshoot of the city's commitment to change out um, apartment houses from, you know, number six oil to natural gas. Um, but the Spectra Pipeline is very oversized, and so there are lots of people who believe that the Spectra Pipeline is really using this program as an excuse to set up an export program out of the harbor of New York City. Well, the city's been very strong in protecting the watershed. There's been a good deal of restlessness about whether or not the mayor gets the fact that fracking is not consistent with his sustainability agenda. Um, and the fact that his active support for the Spectra pipeline certainly has indicated, you know, as I suggested earlier, some inconsistencies in other positions he's taken. Um, that has caused some, shall we say, restlessness among the troops. Um, the, you know, particularly since Bloomberg has gained a great deal of credibility for his sustainability initiatives, but Spectra is the wrong way to go about that. And there's kind of an unholy alliance between um, the Bloomberg administration and Con Ed to promote the use of natural gas, and there's no guarantee this would not be Marcellus gas with its high radon levels. So we're, we're seriously missing some pieces of the New York City local energy puzzle that the city has not taken into account. Now, the radon issue. Um, one of the things I learned when I moved here from Spokane is New Yorkers cook with natural gas. They don't cook on electric stoves. Um, now, all natural gas has radon in it because the shale, um, you know, the underground formations, particularly shale that it comes from, possess uranium. And radon is a breakdown product of, u of, ura of uranium through a series of now, the gas we currently get comes from Louisiana and Texas. It takes four days to get up here and it has a very low level of radon. So that in, now radon has a half-life, which means half the radon breaks down atomically in 3.8 days. So essentially, the gas coming up here has enough transit time to clear itself up. Now, the available data, and I stress the word available because quite frankly, there has not been a public health analysis that I think is you know, of the rigor needed. The available data suggests that Marcellus gas has levels of radon four to five times that of the Texas gas we currently import. And the Marcellus gas would have a transit time to New York of no more than 10 hours, which would mean that you would not get any significant breakdown in terms of half-life. So that if you burn this gas in your stove, this gas is essentially going to vent into your environment because um, burning doesn't do anything to radon gas. So the question then, you know, and radon is actually in the United States the second biggest source after tobacco of lung cancer. So it seems to me, being, quote, a, 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 you know, a former commissioner and a responsible public health person, that what is desperately needed before we go ahead with spectra is a really dispassionate airing by competent public health specialists of the radon issue. How much of the gas coming to Spectre would come from the Marcellus? Because pipelines do mix gas. What would be the transit time and what would be the kind of emissions the ordinary family would get using this gas, you know, as essentially a stove fuel? One of the things that there's a huge potential for in the city of New York is building retrofits. And if we're going to talk about jobs, that has a huge potential impact for us. So I would hope that that I would hope that as we kind of look down the road, we are talking about a mayoral election that will be fought around the issue of how we're going to finance converting the city to a carbon-free, you know, urban island by, say, the year 2025. And the answer to that is to create the, our new building management industry in the city of New York.